let's tidy up this tangle of film by putting it on a reel. Here is a motion picture film. A thousand feet. Sixteen thousand separate photographs. Welcome, everybody. First off, dude, thank you so much for coming over. Super excited. Hanging out in the room. I know it's a lot of shit to like take in at it's first. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. I didn't I haven't actually spent time in it. There's so many great things though. It's, yeah, it's, it's taken a year to get this place. Man I, cave. I, I don't think yeah, man cave, yeah. man studio. I don't think there's a single space left on the wall, but I will find it. Yeah, for sure. But, or uh, replace something. Yeah, exactly. So come, well, I can't can't take down the big one, the prestige. That's my Nolan, right? Like, <laughs> that one takes up the most room. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So cool. um, I told you that we would talk about you today, which I'm very excited to talk about. I'm always about the journey. So how did you find? How did you find film? How did you find wanting to act? Yeah, I mean it's 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 a convoluted thing, but um, I. I guess it all started in University of Manitoba, but it really started in high school where. Uh, I, I'd kind of lost my peer group that I was hanging out with, which meant that I was like doing a lot of drinking and drugs and stuff. <laughs> Translation, okay. Translation. <laughs> and I was, then I was pushed into the arts by my teachers. We to had, get out of the drugs. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we had this core group, and uh, we, we wrote this little skit show uh, that we performed at um, uh, Prairie Theatre Exchange after it moved to Portage Place. Okay. And, we, uh, you know, we got, we got great adjudication, and it was just a really nice moment where I got to bond with a whole bunch of friends that I probably never would have had if I didn't do it. So there was something there. I was like, I, re I really want to do that again. But then I went to university uh, to take education. What did you want to teach? Um, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, 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 I don't know if I wanted to teach. Oh. That's so funny. I know. It's ironic now. Yeah. but uh, They never tell us how to do school. No, like how to pick your life. I just know. thought, okay, I, I, I really adored my teachers growing up. They, they really kind of gave me a lot of encouragement and a path to follow, uh, which I appreciated coming from where I did. Anyway, uh, so anyway, really, I got to University of Manitoba. I took an intro to theater class. George Tolls was teaching it, so okay. that's kind of this is going to be the thread, maybe. Um, and and he uh, he really championed me. He he thought you know as a first year student. I, I had a lot of special qualities for this business. So he'd take me aside a lot saying, you know, you could actually do this if you wanted to. So that led to me dropping, like almost VWing all of my education courses and then starting to steer by the end of that year into theater. And then the next two years, I took all theater and film um, and then even went and auditioned for Ryerson, which is now, uh, I forget what the whole, the new, it's anyway, it's in Toronto. Okay. Auditioned with about three thousand people, accepted thirty six people. I got in, and that kind of changed Fuck my yeah. that changed my life. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. So that's really where it started. What was that process like? Like three thousand people? Show, like I mean, I know American Idol when three thousand people show up. What's yeah? Maybe I'm exaggerating, and that's gonna still happen. even three hundred people. Sure, sure. But it was it was and it was mostly um, the the Greater Toronto Area who okay. were auditioning. GTA, and then GTA. And then I was maybe amongst three Winnipeggers who showed up. Um, and yeah. And I knew I, you guys were from Winnipeg because you have Parkas. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I guess it, it, it geez, what did it involve? It was, it was an original thing where I had to do a monologue and, and sing a song. I sang a song by a friend named Aaron Peters, uh, uh, a wonderful indigenous artist. Uh, he sang a song about, um, and, and now it's here today, it's called The Perfect Crime, about... Uh, Indigenous children being buried. Hmm. It was, and I sang it. And then the first question was, "Are you indigenous?" And I was like, "No, I'm Mennonite." <laughs> <laughs> what but is it, it? What do I have to be? <laughs> but it's a, It was. It was one of my favorite things. I told you that I I spent a lot of time with Ryan Black yes. growing up, and yeah, and that's where I met Aaron. And uh, so we we would jam a lot. We would. I would be invited just to be a voice in the room, and uh, yeah, that was. So I did this. Got a call back. I had to do. A, I think they gave us a cold read of Shakespeare. Oh boy! And then we had to come in and do an improv, and then this the second callback was like adjudication of like four so people. So you've got a monologue, okay? Yeah, a song. We can move on from this. It's no, fine. no, 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 yeah, no. You yeah, got a yeah, monologue. Yeah. You got a song. Then you've got a Shakespearean, like almost a cold read. A cold read, and then you've got a cold read Shakespeare, which not a lot of people know we tone cadence. We spend like we each got about half an hour outside to go over it and then read off the page, but but make, make choices. Yeah. And then you got to do an improv. Then we have to do an improv, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think any of it went well, but, 
but of I, course it did. Look what you are. <laughs> but but I I got selected to be there, and so yeah, I went, and uh, and I like I think that's that's really the the nuts and bolts of it. And then, geez, there's more to it. It's it's a crazy little story at the beginning of my career because, um, in that process of going to audition, my wife and I, who were friends at the time, had like started a relationship, and she had agreed to drive me to Toronto because I couldn't even afford to get there. So we did two trips together, and in the process, we were very close. Yeah. And then by the time I got in and and started school, I got a phone call about three weeks into the classes saying. I'm pregnant. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Man, your story's a movie. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. And then uh so I, I stayed for three months and I couldn't focus because you know that Yeah, that's a I, lot of stress. I was I think twenty four. And so yeah, oh, I was dude, like yeah. I can't I, I gotta go back. So I dropped out and I uh, I took whatever I had left of my student loan. This I tell this story so many times so everyone's heard it, but I bought a an engagement ring at the corner, uh, the jewelry store right beside Ryerson. Um, um, two days later, I got on a plane. I booked uh, the Viscount Gort, and we went to Ray and Jerry's. And at the time, it was embarrassing to me because I, I wasn't hip or I wasn't a hipster or anything. <laughs> so when we went there, because we were from the North End, we were like, uh, I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this was like vintage. <laughs> but anyway, Which is now why everyone keeps going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's normal, man. So then I proposed to her and she said yes. And we set a date for January 2nd because we both come from t- traditional families. So that's that was important. Yeah. Um, and then January 4th, in that process, I I um, I shot a, a film with Guy Madden, uh, just a short film, uh, and I did got into a play that George Stoltz directed, but Ross McMillan had uh, written. And we started. I got married January second. We started rehearsal January fourth. So no honeymoon. I was starting my acting career. I got my equity card from that, uh, and then the rest is history. Wow, and I, and I stayed with it, and that means that's that's a roller coaster ride, dude. Where I I walked away from acting, at least ten times in the last whatever it is now, twenty five years. That's a running theme that you hear a lot about, right? Like you go in your first dive, right? You mm. roll up a stake, take it off, you know, going to Vancouver, Toronto, L.A. Mm-hmm. I did the Toronto thing, and you know it. You hear about how it like you really got to have some armor on your soul. For this one, yeah, yeah. Well, and for me, more more uh, accurately, because I had a young uh, a baby, and and then three years later I had another one. For me, it was about st- stability and creating a world for my kids, and knowing that I wasn't making enough money to do that from this career. Yeah, I'm a twenty four year old. You want to be an actor? Okay, you can fall down. Sure. You can eat Mister Noodles. If, you can if you don't have a kid. If you don't have a kid, right? Yeah. You can do whatever you want. But now you're trying to. L- live a very big shared dream Mm -hmm. and be a dad at the same time so for me it was really always it bringing me back and and having something a little bit bigger more challenging come my way and i can't be articulate about that but i just know that every time i walked away the forces that be just said no you're you're, the force is strong with this one. that's right (laughs) (laughs) i am a jedi (laughs) that's that's where we'll land on that one i got a sword up there man (laughs) if you want to play with it after (laughs) i've been eyeing it Uh, Uh, no that's that's uh everybody asks that question too says the same thing it usually was an accident you weren't trying like film film is a motley crew of of vagabonds and travelers and and i think that's what makes these projects and the 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 ones that we love so much stand the test of time because it's Mm -hmm. a ragtag group of people yeah from all walks of life who've never worked together right who now all have to lift and figure out one one person's dream yeah and get it right collaboration it's the hardest thing to learn in this business to to not be the center of the universe but to to even though we have that infrastructure within it, we're all pulling our weight. And uh, Michael Riley, he's a Canadian actor. Jeez, uh, I'll let the people who know Canadian history. But he came in to do a workshop, and he told he he shared this one analogy that making a film is maybe one of the hardest things to do because it's a line of people, just how you explained, who all have different artistic uh, uh, interests and histories, and and you they pass they stand in the line and they pass this egg that's so fragile. That that somebody created at the front, yeah. And and as they pass it, everyone's got to do is some kind of form of incubation, add their own spice. Well, that's to it. good. 
But I think some, he said a lot of times what happens in film is that somebody's ego gets involved and says, mm -hmm. I can do this better than the last person who gave it to me. And they interrupt the process. So he said nine times out of a ten, out of ten, when you make a film, by the time that egg gets to the end of the line and it, it becomes a bird and it hatches, it's this like Frankenstein thing that can't fly because n everybody's not on the same page. They're not trying to just do the same job for that one, that one egg. And I just thought, well, that's I got to carry that for the rest of my life. Yeah, because that's that's really what this industry is about. Is is you're just coming in to put your 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 touches on your from your judge from whatever you can whatever you've saw yeah and then you have to you have to you have to Let somehow well yeah you have to pass it on and 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 just hope that you didn't try to rearrange something and or or go against what the whole vision was in the first place anyway it's I just I love that analogy and I'm, I do too I kind of want to get a tattoo of an egg on me now just to remind me yeah. of this like this that's is the thing that's so that's that's a really beautiful way to put it okay so yeah, there you go. So now we know how you got into it. Okay. When did you remember, because you say that you wanted, you, you got a family. Mm -hmm. you, 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 Beautiful family, thank you. You're, you're shaking the dice, wanting to be an actor, postman, to salesman, repairman. These are all guaranteed incomes. Right? Sure. The accountant do. was the one that uh, Christina's psychic said I should have been. Ah. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> but um, when did you go... Like you say, you walked away ten times, but when was yeah. the first time that you were like, "Okay, I'm. This is a career. This isn't try, fail, try, fail, try, fail. This is now something that I'm." Yeah, I. You know, I hesitate to say that that I ever sat down and said this is a career. I, I, I. But I did decide that I am going to keep trying this until the day I die. But I'm going to make my life so that I can do this and that and that. So interesting a acting okay. studio auditioning, but I also work for the city that happened during the pandemic. I sure. took a job. Um, so I just, I have a lot of things going on in my life that just bring in a little bit of income here and there. Okay. So really it's, I, it's a, it's a, I, I decided to be. You're in, in control of it. In, I included it in my career. Ah, <laughs> well, no, because the age old idea of like get a career 40 years, retire, yeah. that's gone. It's gone. So precarious work is the the new way of life. It is because this, as much as the d the day job pays for all this, mm -hmm. right? So like, I don't have this if I don't have that. But at the same time, I got this. Mm -hmm. So like, and in and it's in little chunks, and it's here and there, and it's highlights, and it's what I love doing. Yeah. So I I kind of sympathize with you in that regard, where you're like, well, I'll just make it fit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just because because you need to. Here's the thing. I I've always needed to be creative in my whole life. That's that's always been the thing since I was like very young. I I really was drawn to creativity. It, if it was singing or, and I don't play an instrument, but I tried. <laughs> but art, I loved doing things that were very hands on. It just and I excelled at it. So uh, it's always been kind of something that I need in my life. I need to be creative or else. I'm not a happy person. Okay, well, that brings me to my next question with you because it has to do with creating the characters. So, okay. Um, is there something that you've learned that significantly helps you shape, because you play multiple characters, you wear multiple hats, things change, no two stories are the same. Mm -hmm. Is there something that helps you, that you rely on every time you go to develop your character? Um, I wrote down repetition. Um, so that what that means is is reading the the project over and over again within the time that I have, um, just so that I can start absorbing. Uh, but but there's so much more understanding what our situation is, um, understanding how I can connect to that from my own constitution, um, and then and then not betray what's on the page because there's there's they always draw these like situations where this character kind of has a vibe, so. Um, if I ever do kind of steer away from my own constitution, who I am, I, my my end goal within whether it's three days to figure it out for an audition or it's like three months to kind of do a play, I'm always starting from that place saying, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow that external idea to come within. I'm open me. to everything. Yeah, and then and, but then the hope is by the end of it, before I before I present it, that me is in that. That that that's still that's an extension of me. So I, I somehow figure out how to, I don't know, what's what what's the venom? He's one of the 
A symbiote. I, I try to make it a symbiote. <laughs> I get it. Yes. So you're inside of the character. Yes. Even as far as you have to go to get there, something's grounded in you as opposed to grounding the character in whatever contemporary idea. It's That's in. my hope. And okay. that, that doesn't all, I don't always succeed at that. I mean, I've, I've done 100 plus auditions where I just stunk up the room because it was all externalized because I had no... It never got close to me. And, and that's, <laughs> if film is, of all the mediums of uh, art, I think film is the most uh, microscopic in terms of like, yeah, that's bullshit. Oh, yeah, you I, can't yeah, get past I don't want to hire that. No. <laughs> what is it in that room? Like, I, I, I would never want to be a fly on the wall because it's already hard enough. You, that clip of Ryan Gosling when he's talking about auditioning. Yeah, I saw Have it. you seen that one where yeah. he's like, you show up and you get there and you think and you're wearing Everyone in the room looks the same. Yeah, as, and you, you brought the cowboy yeah, hat. And everyone else is wearing it. Yeah, and, and then yeah. you get a parking ticket. Like, Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and why am I doing this? Yeah. As long as you've been doing it, does that ever get easier because everybody i've heard they're like you're not you're 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 practicing your craft when you're auditioning right like you yeah. can always put a positive spin on something but really truly honestly talking about the audition yeah does that has that ever gotten easier i, I i'd have to say maybe the last five years yes but but only because i went out of my way to start making personal relationships with the, with the people who are um who are bringing me in who are who are giving me um adjustments um I, I think a lot of the time, I, I've had so many uh, auditions too where I, I just melt in front of people because my insecurities just come to the fore. And I, and I can't, my voice doesn't exist anymore. I, I'm, my choices, my ideas, I'm second guessing everything. Um, so it's taken a minute. I, I'm, I, I think I'm a lot more comfortable in that room. Um, um, the only time that I get flaky is when I, when I feel underprepared. When I sure I didn't give yeah. myself enough time, and, and here I am presenting something and hoping that they're gonna still hire me, so I I get a little flaky there. But you know I'm I'm still working. It's I'm a work in progress, my friend. I I I've done some really cool things. <laughs> I'm really proud of a lot of the stuff I've done. But you know, it's uh I I think art should always be in a state of um I don't know. I'm a beginner. Well, yeah, because as soon as you let the ego in, you think you know. And you not, you're you're cutting yourself off from from whatever you could come your way. Well, you don't see anything through it. You don't see you don't see you don't you don't connect. You don't connect. You're not you're not present. You're not grounded in that moment anymore because all all it is is about you and your your journey. Yeah. Not about how this can be just another whatever uh, step in the road that where, where you get an, you get a privilege to kind of be part of something, no matter how big or small. It, I I I just love. Every opportunity, uh, I say yes to too much stuff. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the movie, it didn't work out for him all the time. But I mean, yeah, okay. Is it true that like you're just like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I, I know how to do that. Don't worry about it. And I, then you're like, six months later, you're like, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I certainly have said yes to things. So like, I, I fit that. I can, I can. But but you know the truth is I say yes to more things that scare the shit out of me. Well, you're not going to learn otherwise. Well, right? that's it. It's like I'm not going to be challenged. I'm not going to be stretched. And yeah, and and maybe to my detriment sometimes. But um, but I think that I, I that's something I learned from George Tolls was if you're not scared of the thing that you're trying, um, then maybe it, you shouldn't try it because you've already done it. There's no reason to try it again. Yeah. You're not really setting yourself up for for failure, for tension, for growth. You're setting yourself up to kind of become complacent and bored and you know, I don't know. It just I, I need to be scared. I think that's the point. I like that though. Like mm -hmm. I with this endeavor, just for slight comparison, everything scared the shit out of me from the start because I was like imposter syndrome. Yeah. Well right. that's it. That's the big buzz thing now, yeah. Imposter syndrome. It's real. It's real. I know. Fuck it sucks. And that's that's why I said I, I and I think I've been doing this instinctively, but but now it's out there. You always should be a beginner every time you try something, because then that's when you're the most interesting. So when you're the most human in the in the room, and then you're not afraid to connect to the guy who's got all of these credits and all of this experience, because you get to be a beginner. You don't have to be a peer or an equal. You get to you you get to ask questions. You get to say hello and look that person in the eye like they're a human, not somebody who you know you want their autograph from. Or... I don't think I'm going to look at acting in any other way now. <laughs> I think hey, I've talked to you for 20 minutes so far. Like good. it's, it's, it's really, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to rewatch a bunch of movies now. Good. Um,
We're human. We, 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 <laughs> like, is there, like, is there, is there something that turns off in you? Are you there the whole time? Like, what is it? Like, I, I'm in my mind. I'm just watching. Okay, you, 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 you know, know your your sight line. You've, you've, you're, you're aware of a room where everybody is, but mm-hmm. you've got to go somewhere where you. It, it's like the green on Sunday at Augusta, right? Where you got to turn off everybody who's there who's all there for you right sure, they absolutely. all want you to succeed and that's that's the adjustment you have to make yeah. but like do you are you are you actively in the moment are you do you come back to it like is are, are you like i think that's where my experience with theater comes into play because you know unlike theater film is is very intimate and 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 the the, le- the less is more thing is is a real story i i try it I'm, I'm not i haven't even come close to master to my opinion my opinion but 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 the whole thing of the idea of 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 a crew around you and yes expectations and you know okay quiet on set and action and all of a sudden it's like oh shit it's just us yeah and, but everyone is like literally uh, they could touch us they're so close sometimes i think for in theater what you learn is to kind of feed off the audience where there's expectation that you're going to be great. So you start saying your lines, you start connecting, and then all of a sudden you feel the room kind of, you there's a there's a vibe in the room. You 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 either know when it's working or you feel like, "Oh no, it's like Yeah, that's I'm, the human in you that's telling I, you what's up. I'm missing the vibe here." Yeah. So I I think that's really what I cling to is just to make sure that when I do come in with a performance that at least everybody in the room is is perking up, going, "Okay, that's working." Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Okay. I was in musical theater as a kid, and I, I I remember the moments where like when you know it all comes together and it pops. Yeah, and you, you can it. you can feel it. It's it's ethereal. It's 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 like the the water worm in the abyss. It's 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 you just know. Mm-hmm. And I and and I think people who are meant to tell stories and be in front of the camera and share their way of the world through their storytelling you you know that or you don't right right, you can you can teach someone to show up on time but can you teach them to be there in that moment it's either is or isn't and then of course there's the other part of that where you have to also train yourself to hate the hate the audience so that why why well because sometimes the audience can try can dictate what because they have expectations of what that's going to be like you mean the world is full of assholes who are like, this is how you should fucking do it? Well, and then they go they, online and puke it to all well, of they, us? Well, they, they show up with this expectation. This is how I imagined it. And then, and then of course, but again, so this is, that's so complicated that if you, if you, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm really just talking about the energy of the audience. Okay. If everyone's engaged, you feel it. But if, but if you're, but there's the other side where you can say, I'm going to try to give them what I think they want. And then that's a mistake because that's when you start externalizing and pushing and and not being present in that moment. You're you're trying to amp things up to make sure you're getting the laugh or you're getting people to feel. You're something. asking for the laugh instead of asking for the intimacy. Of the, the... In the moment with your fellow actor, like let's let's make sure that this moment between us, even though we have all these distractions around us, let's make sure that we know what we're what we're after. Let's make f- make sure that what what we're doing it feels right, it feels connected. You're not looking through me. I'm not looking through you. We're we're looking at we're each lots. other and we're creating. Yeah, we're creating this, and it doesn't matter if it's it. Do- we can change it up if we need to. We can make adjustments. What's that? Is there a high that's comparable to that that you found in your life? <laughs> um. That's well, suitable I, for the I, public. <laughs> I, I did go to Yellowstone recently, and oh. I, I had I had a few moments out there where I, I welled up, going, "Wow, this is kind of th- this is untouched. This is really beautiful. This is the last part of America that hasn't been drilled or fucked right. or sold or whatever." Yeah, well, partially. They, they sure they, yeah. they have enough commercial inside of that too. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's no. a whole fucking show about it. So there's that too. I really love to get out and see the world if I can. Which I can't because I don't make a lot of money. <laughs> do you like? Where do you do you do you watch life for things in moments that you can be like, I'm going to pocket that and use that for later, or when you mm-hmm. when you come up with a when you're presented with a character, um, you you said the repetition part to get into it, but do you do you if you're going to be X Y Z character, do you go and experience X Y Z things? I- 
I, I did at the beginning. Yeah. And I think it was kind of, whew, yeah. I, I, I probably did bad things to myself in order because because I think that's one thing when you're when you're connecting with characters and you're going to these dark human places. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I think certainly I absorb it all the time when it happens. And uh, uh, I, I think I just I'm not as cognizant as, as I was when I was a younger actor. Because I, I remember as a younger actor, I, I felt like I would, I'd, I'd use everything in a performance or in a production or something. And then maybe would go seek out more damage in order to kind of stay in the moment connected with that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because that's the one thing when you when you have a performance and you're and you're connecting with something after you've used something that you really felt and you went there. The next time around, it feels it's almost like that well is dry. It's like there's nothing in there anymore. I was going to say, and then maybe you're like, OK, uh, like the the damaged comedian who's got to go out there and, you know, have find the more hard material. Li- yeah, find more material. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, I, I understand the Hunter S. Thompson route of it. Right. Sure. You can you can get fucked up. You can go gonzo and you can do it. But I mean, now you're bordering on, like you said, your own. It's to your own detriment. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not getting younger. No. No, <laughs> less cells to spare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to be around for my grandkids. You know what I mean. Is there a role that you had a hard time coming out of? Yeah, it was uh, Joe Keller. Tell me about it. Give me two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that one hit me. Um, yeah, I don't. I I think because I'm 49, uh, so I'm. I'm. This is my 50th year. I'm a 74 baby. For for listener, this is all my sons. All my sons yeah. by uh, Arthur Miller. I did this last the year. Playwright. The playwright, the playwright, and and what a what a privilege to be uh, given the opportunity to, to to do this kind of work in Winnipeg. Uh, it's it's rarely done, and if it is done, it's done at a professional level. And typically, they're only hiring a few kind of uh, supporting roles in the city. Everything's coming offshore. But but Joe Keller, uh, all my sons. He he's a tragic character who told a really um, a really tragic lie in order to save his business and his family and his future and sacrifice his best friend to do it. For a listener, just give him the Coles notes of it. Um, so um, just during World War II, Joe Keller decided to sell uh, or give faulty parts to the military for airplanes. And, and this is based on a true story. Yeah. Um, and and what happened uh, is it twenty one pilots? There's a band. There's a number of there's a band that... called 20, 21 pilots, but it's. Uh, um, so 21 pilots died because of these that's parts. That's why they got their name. That's, and because they're from the same place where it happened. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. So and then it, and then the story unfolds of, of us, of the audience learning about all of the changes that were made in his life, uh, that his family stayed intact. A few neighbors had been replaced. And one particular neighbor whose daughter is coming back to to p- potentially marry my son who was engaged to my other son who died in the war, also a pilot, uh, their, their house now has somebody else living in it, and we find out that uh, their father um, was, the, was the scapegoat for Keller to, to save his career. And then he, he, he buried it with his wife and even kept it away from his own son who came back from the war. And so everything unfolds in the end. Um, to the point where he has to face the truth, and the, and the lynch or the linchpin is pulled when he finds out his son killed himself because of the news of the twenty one pilots dying because had he of not his told, company. Had he not fucked around, if he'd not, screwed, if, it, if he if he'd taken the fall for it, or maybe even said no to it in the first place, his, still, he'd still have his family. It would it might have been different. He wouldn't have been as wealthy. He would have had to sacrifice his business and start over. But yeah. He he. he you have what a, matters. He made a very difficult decision. So, as someone who has a family, and obviously you've mentioned grandkids, like you, the family aspect is big for you. I yeah. imagine that was like looking into a mirror and maybe not and, seeing stuff that you wanted and, to see, and maybe revisiting a lot of my childhood with my own father and my grandfather and the history of my family and and where I came from. Because you know, I I'm not a lot like Joe Keller, but I I was you had to be. I was raised by a lot of Joe Kellers, right? They're an era of man. For sure. An era of men, and not that my family yeah. were liars. That's not what I'm trying to say. But but they were tough. They were they they were, they worked hard. They they found ways to survive with with very little means. And um, so and but in the process, they kept things away from us too. And maybe was were, my dad might have been somewhat abusive at times. 
And so, ah, again, <laughs> this is, I told, I warned you, this it's stuff, this, this is too close. Um, so, uh, and maybe I don't even want this in the podcast, but it, this is my therapy session with you. And that's it, Michael. You're, this is the end of the interview. I got to go. Um, <laughs> Safe space, man. It's yeah, totally I know it good. is. It's good. Um, so, yeah. So I think I really started inhabiting a lot of my dad's qualities to to find this character. And uh, and in the end, he. That's he, incredibly brave of you. It's, it was. And it, and it kind of broke me. But in a way, but in a way, it brought me closer to my own father. Uh taught me to respect a lot of his choices that he made because they were difficult they were of a time they were of a time and and it's you know we we inherit what we were given from our own parents you know we we try to evolve we try to get better we try to improve the situations that were bad um but at the end of the day that's 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 it in a nutshell that's what we're given to work with you do the best you can with what you got and you hope that you get more exposure from the world but but validation doesn't come easy from from outside people because they're all building their own pyramids so anyway, that's to the point is, is that that was the one role that, that, um, that, that I went so deep with. And I, I'm so proud of that work that we did as a collective. It was just an, a, a beautiful uh, realization of a very challenging play that's from the 1940s. And, and I think we, we've, we've found a, a lot of beautiful nuggets out of it. And um, yeah, so coming out of it, I went back to a city job mowing grass and picking up garbage. <laughs> After getting seven standing ovations, <laughs> so my hey man, you gotta live. Like, yeah, so my validation was on like an all time high, and it went to like the the lowest of the low of like cleaning up after people in Winnipeg, which I I don't mind doing to be honest. I really don't. <laughs> well, no, I mean it's probably humbling. <laughs> it's 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 beautifully humbling, and and I love working outside, and I love working with the people that I do. They're they're all a bunch of wonderful human beings. Anyway, uh, it was just a moment where I was doing this, and I was like. Where where did I turn that corner that I that I said it was okay for me to <laughs> to do this? And I don't know if it meant I didn't take a real job or I I I I I survived this acting career. I don't know. I just I just had this midlife crisis moment and I uh I turned off the machine that I was operating in the middle of this field of grass and um I, I just I think I had an anxiety attack and I and I my face was leaking I wasn't crying or anything I just got I just got my whole body got swollen and I and, and I had tears I just that I couldn't I, I couldn't stop them they just I just was leaking that's the big cry that feels so good when you're done I guess so it, it changed a lot of things it made me make a lot of decisions I'm still in the process of that change um, but anyway, I, 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 I'm no different than who I was, but, but when you ask that, that's a trigger for me. Cause that's the role. That's the role that I was like, I, I, I was meant to do this. <laughs> so why, why didn't I, just... I am incredibly, I, I mean, I knew it happened. I yeah. knew you were in it. I feel like an app, like knowing what I know now about what you put into it, I would have loved to have seen that. Mm. And I, and no, this, I didn't want anyone to. See sure. That. Okay. Fair. Oh, you mean all my sons? All I, your I sons, thought yeah. you meant my. No, 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 no. That's your. That's you. That that's all you meant. I get it. I'll be there when you're done for beer. But okay, like, you know, okay. But like, I knowing what you called into, knowing like, and that's the thing that I told you about that I get, I, 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 I get. My, uh, you fucking gonna make me cry now, dude. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> it's therapeutic for both. Never of us. bring in an actor on again. <laughs> no, I'm not. You get too too real. But no, my my experience with film was uh, uh, a lace and father who had a giant collection and a huge flat screen TV, but no regard for me. Mm-hmm. So I would go and visit him on my weekends with my father, and I would have Doctor Shivago and The Godfather and Terrace Balba mm-hmm. and all these big films from our from his childhood that I would never watch him with so I would forget I would forget where I was and I would be taken away by storytellers so my crush on your talent is being able to go to a place that's rotten mm-hmm. excuse me that is for me the audience for me to experience and to have a conversation about and walk away from but at what at what challenge to you, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody who came to see you is walking away 
absolutely entertained and well devastated to be and devastated yeah. sorry de- de- yeah. entertained, but, and, and, entertained but and then shockingly devastated yeah broken yeah. right yeah. you know it's it's not a happy ending yeah but they will walk away and they will have no idea what you went through to get there to perform that and that's what i find so interesting about an actor is that you do that again and again and again yeah yeah why <laughs> that's a good question i don't know it's got to be getting shit out. I imagine, you know. I, but here's, I, as an instructor, I, I always tell people there are there are therapeutic qualities to acting, but it's not therapy. <laughs> sure. It, okay, it, I'm sorry. It only complicates it. It really <laughs> makes it worse. Well, because you're becoming another person and not dealing with the shit that you might need to deal with. Yeah, you're inhabiting something and going, okay, well, I, I, I channeled it. Uh, I, And I'm going to make some changes going forward, but I... I might have have uh, uh, paid attention. I've I, I brought it out and put it on the shelf for some stupid reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does every actor need? What's one thing that to make a maybe not a great actor, but just to make an actor better? Confidence to be themselves. Confidence to to put themselves out in the world. Um, and, and and finding a way through it because um, I think everybody's got a quality that 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 belongs in front of a story, um, and but I think a, a lot of times we 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 second guess ourselves, we sell ourselves short again, imposter syndrome. Um, we you just, listen to the little voice in your head. We never allow we yeah we never allow that voice to be quiet. We we always allow that voice to have superiority over us so i think the big thing that i've been doing lately i don't know if it's working but i think it is um and this was after i did all my sons and had my little episode i and this is again listening to a lot of self-help stuff uh i stopped caring about validation and most importantly from the people that i held closest in my life my own family i i I tore up all the contracts with them and said i know i've done all this for you and I know I've probably kind of filed that stuff up because I didn't get the return. So I'm, I have all these like IOUs. And I said, they're all done. I've just ripped them up. We're going to start clean. Um, you guys can do what you're going to do. I know you guys got your contracts against me. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't know them. It just, no. but, but yeah. I just, I, I just needed to. So it's validation of, of your own worth that you have to give yourself every day and say, yeah, I had a good day. I did a I did a lot of cool things today. I got out of bed and I achieved. Whether it's big or small, it doesn't matter. It's it's really about you stopping expectations of validation from others. So I think again, this is confidence for me. This is this is you waking up every day saying, I'm I'm doing the shit that I want to do. Yeah. And I uh and, and I'm gonna go I'm go I'm gonna go hustle for it. I'm gonna go hustle to get myself out there. Uh, understanding that there's there's a lot of doors that are going to close on me, it's fine. Um, just because, I, yeah, that's the thing. It's for me, it's confidence. It's it's a belief in yourself. When when you have that and you walk in a room, people it's palpable. People see it. They, they do. They, this is what they hire. They go, okay, that. And then you're making strong choices. You're you have your own voice. Your creativity is kind of opened up. So. You know, and here's the other thing about talent. I, I, I think a lot of talent comes from not what people prepare. You can certainly strengthen skills, um, but really it comes from you getting out of your own way and just saying, hey, I'm just going to, whatever whatever comes to mind here, I'm throwing whatever. it out there. It's what's <laughs> happening right now. I love that. I'm not going to filter because that's where people are really engaged. That's when that's when actors become truly brilliant. And I'll I'll guarantee you that no actor is going to sit down and go, "Yeah, I thought about that. I I planned that. That was uh <laughs> I I decided that 3 months ahead of time so that when we got to camera I Yeah, don't own it. It it, it you you found it in the moment. Let's, yeah. yeah. Let's leave it that, a miracle. That's and and here's the last thing I'll say about that. Uh Say more. <laughs> okay. No. But is it, this is a Guy Madden thing, and I'm going to bring this up at the workshop, so that's my first kind of segue. But it's Perfect. Doing an, in, an auditioning workshop. Guy Madden's a special guest. But he said this while we were shooting. I think it was Coward's Bend the Knee, which is one of my favorite projects I've ever done in terms of, like, Guy and I were just, we were two peas in a pot. I was playing him. He was directing, and we had so much fun. Uh, you played the guy that was directing it. Yeah, yeah. It was magic. Anyway, Coward's Bend the Knee, it's, it's a really... Uh, Oh, you should check it out. Everyone should. Anyway, he said that um, if you can find three 
like brilliant moments, inspiring moments within your storytelling. So while you're while you're accumulating all of your footage and everything, if you can have three incredible moments where you're like, ah, oh, I'm an artist. <laughs> everything else or surrounding those three moments is forgiven. Yep. And that becomes a masterpiece because of those three moments. Yeah. So if you can remember that for everything you do, always seek out those three perfect moments that, that you do not have control of, by the way. These are moments, they're happy accidents. They're, they're just moments of inspiration that happened in a moment. Um, if you got three, you got a product. Is that good? No, it's perfect. I loved it. It's the rule of three. The rule of three. By Darcy Fair. It's, well, I'm I'm pretty, pretty obsessed with that. That's my <laughs> secret, though. Okay. Now it's out in the I'll world. cut it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Listener. Can't. You mentioned Guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's just get into it. Like, you've had the acting studio. You, you, you've been teaching for 16 years, 16 I think. 16 years now. What is it that you have found that you love about teaching? Yeah. Well, a lot of things. I, I, I keep... I keep getting excited about it. I'm, I'm, I'm not. When I there's been challenges, you know. There's students that you work with where you're like, oh, I'm never gonna get through that person. Maybe I went too far with that one. But then there's so many more where I'm like, we just opened up something there. That that was incredible. And then I get to be the person who who got to be like the the go between for that, of of saying of just kind of saying whatever I needed to say. I I work so much in the moment, but I just I have this. I, I know that I have this ability just to kind of like mold myself to what other what people are working with their insecurities, mostly because of the stuff that I recognize in myself. That's well, a strong sense of empathy, right? And so I, I see people have these these epiphanies, these moments, these breakthroughs, and um, and I go home feeling like I've achieved something really important. And and you being creative and you having that permission in your life to put out an idea that you created. And, and have people uh, receive it. And it, it, they can receive it any way they want. It's, again, this is go about, goes back to validation. They can say yes or no, but because you got the opportunity to do it in your life, your quality of life, I feel, believe, is like 10 times better than it would have been if you decided to say, I can't do it. Yeah, no. Anyway, that's, that's, that's where I come from. That's what I teach. Uh, and then within that, I have an infrastructure where I pull out all these scenes from... What I think are great films, I have allowed some of my cohorts to bring in some slock, and I know I can see that you're a, you're a fan of some of it. But does my room pass your test? Yeah, yeah, it's it's close. Uh, you'd love you'd love to meet Jean Jacques Javier. He's uh, he talked ad, ad nauseum about things that just relate to that elephant there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I stopped doing it. Uh, I think I did it for one year at Prairie Theater Exchange. It was I was getting like six hours a week and getting paid like I think it was thirty bucks an hour. It wasn't chump change. Yeah, but you know nine hours a week is not no. going to feed anybody, yeah. including myself. No, <laughs> so I threw it away and then I got an opportunity through Video Pool. Uh, this was uh, we said this earlier, but yeah, you're talking Re about Rebecca. Rebecca Gibson was teaching out of a uh, film group and she's amazing. Uh, Hello, if, Rebecca. If you, hi, Rebecca. Um, so she'd walked away to do other things, but also I think she'd moved the studio. Anyway, Jeff Erback was working at Video Pool. We worked on a short project together. He was also a programmer at Video Pool, and he wanted he wanted an acting propo pro uh, proponent back in the studio. Sure. He was about about to leave his job. I think he had something like something worth about five months of free studio time and credits that he'd accumulated over his career there well, and, all he, those credits. and he passed them on to me and he said i want you to start an acting program see if it flies i said okay i'll do it for five months that sounds like a fun side project i'm not working right now everyone's saying no to me let's do it fuck it i'm gonna say yes to myself <laughs> and then i had all these beautiful people peers of mine who i didn't even realize um would would even care what i had to my opinion my ideas but uh they did and and they they lent me their ear uh, and then uh, after that kind of started kind of it, it started slowing down a little bit I, I decided to start bringing in beginners and intermediates and and I realized well wow, there's there's the market that's where people are gonna I'm gonna continue to have uh, a business to run um, so I've been doing it now for 16 years um, I've had my down months but but down months means I, I only have 10 students which I still think is a 
a wonderful month. There's no metric. There's fuck, no metric. If there is a metric, fuck the metric. Like That's right. This is about you and being happy and being fulfilled and doing what you want to do. So, um, obviously, my Winnipeg, right? Yeah. That's that's uh, one you really cut your teeth on. Thank you, Roger Ebert. Uh, no kidding, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. And probably, I mean... I think if not the best way to explain a version of a, of a person's Winnipeg, like if I wanted to say to people of the world, watch this film, will best express so many different things. If it's not in his childhood, it's in the childhood of others. It is a masterpiece. It really is. And it's beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. And it, it, so how does this director's um, uh, thing come about with you and Guy at the, at the acting studio? You know what? I had a brunch with him. Um, I bought a piece of art off of Guy because he had just shot. So this, I think, this is an interesting story. Um, he just shot Rumors um, with Kate Blanchett, um, and it's it's going to do great. But it, it it it's really not in the media a lot. It isn't surprisingly. But you know, as Guy always has with his films, he he always um, doesn't take a payment if because if he puts it into the film if it's needed. I'm not. I'm not joking. So, guy came this home. The original Keanu Reeves. Guy came home and he hadn't received any kind of form of uh, payment from this film yet, which he did eventually. I'm just going to preface with that. Sure. Um, but he decided to go online and, and start selling all of these collages that he made, and these are beautiful, really interesting things that he, he's created over the years. And there's a story behind that. But you can ask Guy. But I saw him, and I, it was probably like three in the morning. I was up scrolling. And I was like, "Guy, what are you doing?" And he said, he, "He's saying I'm selling these to pay my rent." And I was like, "Well, I'm buying this one. You can't give that away. I want that." <laughs> so, so I bought it, and then that turned into a brunch. And then we sat down, and we had this wonderful reminiscence about all of the things we've done. We, we, I think we figured out maybe we hadn't had a one-on-one like that for 15 years, or something crazy like that. Wow, it's crazy. Um, anyway, it was magical, and then at the end, he's like, I'd, I'd love to come by the studio uh, anytime. Uh, I've always wanted to, and I was like, well, I was always afraid to ask because, you know, you're Guy Madden. <laughs> and then I drove home, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this audition workshop. I'm going to bring Guy in. I think that would be fantastic. And then I messaged him, and he said, yes, I'll, I, it's, on, it's on my calendar. We're doing it. And I was like, okay. That's fucking fantastic. Now I have to create an ad. Damn it. <laughs> I can help you with that. Okay, please do. <laughs> I'll send you some shit after. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. This audition workshop, it's its a lot of me, too. I'm, I'm teaching people to kind of demystify the audition room, to strengthen their self-tape work, uh, to, to give them a better kind of infrastructure. Uh, I have Carl Thorderson and Dana Leotold attached to that, too. They almost self-tape everything now, and they book so much work by by through their self tapes, so I really want to. I really want to know what they're doing. Yeah, right. like, th- has this become a thing more because of COVID? Yeah, well, it, uh, Jim Heber, uh, one of our casting directors, only does self tapes now. Carmen has people back in them. Carm Codex yes, bringing yep, people yep. back in the room, which I think is personally, I like it better. Um, but but self tapes are You're a real performing thing. as opposed to just looking into a camera and yeah like I can't make a fucking social media video to save my life because I'm just always looking at myself right right so like I, I <laughs> self taping to me is just you know you, there's no it's like a comedian trying to do a Zoom comedy show sure there's no reaction right and I mean I mean they're probably trained to be like thank you next but at least you're you've got something to aspire to right yeah yeah you have you have you've validation <laughs> yeah <laughs> or feedback at least yeah um yeah no it, it's tricky but you know i was on the set of miracle in bethlehem recently yes. and i i was talking with uh, ben Ayers and uh, laura vandervoort and i was talking about this like frustration that you know uh doing self-tapes i i really prefer being in the room and i'm just getting my handle on auditioning and ben pauses at what pauses me at one point and says dude we're all doing self-tapes get used to it brother <laughs> It's the changing of the guard. It, I it's guess. the world we live in now. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm in this process now, finding silver linings with that stuff. So, for example, with with self tape, one of the things I like to say in the workshop is that um, y- y- you'll never have a bigger prop uh, warehouse than your own house if you need a prop for your audition. There is something in your house for everything, and you d- you don't have to bring it to a room, and then it's strongly discouraged to do so. <laughs> 
I, I got winter tied. I was wearing a parka and shoveling because I had a scene that I had to shovel uh, somebody out of uh, being stuck. So you went and shoveled. So I got a shovel and put a parka on in front yes. of a screen and started shoveling and, and performing the scene with, with, this, with this action. I was like, I would never do that in a room, but I booked that. Now, okay, I'm an outsider, so I, I don't have industry experience in regards to the, seeing the process and, and, and the professional side of it, but... Mm. If I saw someone go that far to get a job, I would be like, "Well done." As long as you're you're not, as long as the props don't become a distraction, that they're they're being inclusive with your choices. Okay, okay. all right, okay. fair enough. It's important. <laughs> it can't be on the nose. Yeah, so yeah. Much it's that... like, look at my props. <laughs> hey, I'm shoveling. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm clever. <laughs> I got mine at a discount. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Wintertide, that's... Okay. Um, John Bernard. John Bernard, yeah. yes. PowerPoint I've, Films. I have been bugging John for months. Shout to, out to John. I just saw it recently. Would you, do you watch yourself? I don't. I hate it. <laughs> I can imagine. I avoided it, but uh, Christina, my wife, wanted to watch it, and I was like, okay, I'll It's like a dystopian sci-fi, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. It's about, you know, people are uh, turning into some form of, like, lifeless, zombie-like creatures. Ooh, a dig. Yeah, he, and then, he shot. He took that around to a bunch of festivals. I saw he too, did, like, yeah. and won a bunch of awards. And yeah, it's done nice. very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. I was just a supporting character. I, the hardest part of that job for me was to put contacts in, so I looked like a zombie. <laughs> it, it took me a minute. They they actually sent me to a, a, a an optician. As who who were giving like us properly fitted and showing me yeah properly fitted and showing me how to do it and I and I I think I was there for forty five minutes and I had to like thank the woman profusely for her patience because I was such a baby about it like every time it would just touch my skin on my eye I'd be like no 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 yeah, it's a no feeling no 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 glasses my entire life yeah Darcy like I can't so you, I can't understand poking yourself to see it was like it's so anti and and she was so calm but she kept on saying it's not that hard <laughs> anyway that's that's it. We're going to touch on the new play that's coming up very shortly. Thank here, you. But I do want to ask you about improv. And okay. And breaking away from the page. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that to me, you've got the writer who's so married to the story because they've brought it from their brain to the life. Yeah. But then you've got these moments that you were talking about, these three beautiful moments, these happy accidents, sure. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. that are anti to what's on the page. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that might be a roadblock at some points where like what you've done that wasn't written is gold mm -hmm. is there a lot of strife there usually is there been a moment where like hmm. where it worked yeah for, um, you know for something like that like is 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 improv it's it's it, it, just it, a comedy thing like it what? differs well i think i think the improv i think improv is a is, it should be called improvisation because okay. improv kind of does kind of lean yeah. to towards we're doing a show yeah that's based names on out of a hat. games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, improvisation in film, I encourage it in my class, but but I think I've been finding the last little while that I've been encouraging it so much <laughs> that actors are coming in and basically rewriting their scripts. They're like, they, I, I, I'm, I'm following their stuff going, that's it, not one of those words that you said is written here. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's getting a little too liberal. Like, you, 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 you can change a word at the beginning of the end maybe i, I think but... changing words is is totally fine but i think my again this is very recent for me i think it's important that you at least revisit the scene after you've kind of figured out a rhythm and a and a vibe that that fits your your energy that you're connecting to you should at least go back and, and honor the work that that writer did and and that's a theater thing i know film it's a little bit loose i know working on uh miracle in bethlehem with jeff beasley he loves just kind of like riffing and throwing lines out it's so much fun to work i'm sure it is yeah it's just you you do a take and he's like okay go again okay say it this way okay and then sometimes right in the middle of a take you'll hear him in, at, at his uh monitor going okay line now okay that looks pretty good <laughs> He's just he's just shaping things and he's I, building with clay. Yeah, tons of fun and I total respect. Um, so I think improv improvisation is a is a is a wonderful thing to have, and you should keep on working that muscle. I've never liked it, um, but I think that's just me because I've had kind kind of negative experiences in the realm of doing improv. Okay, 
and and more so the connection the yeah. short bridge there is usually it's, i because of the people i'm working with kind of like they, i don't know I, they, they weren't yes and people <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that that's the number one rule of improv number right? one rule. yes and yes yeah, and. Yeah, yeah so there's stuff that's coming up for you uh, again back at rachel brown theater mm -hmm. great yeah. theater to watch I again love. working with george tolls what's the play this time 28th minute productions uh, this is the antipodes by Annie Baker, she's a Pulitzer Prize-winning author from from the United States again. Um, maybe one of the, from what George tells me, <laughs> and I'm about to kind of take this journey. Sure. But maybe one of the most strongest voices in theater today okay. in America. George loves to bring wonderful, uh, proven work, and and this is, I think it's maybe five years, ten years old. Anyway, I was doing a little bit of research on it. It's not an old one. Yeah, it's not. It's it's very recent. And um, what's the breakdown? So okay, it's a comedy. This was important when <laughs> when we had our cast party for all my sons. Even George was like, "I think this one took too much out of me. I think I'm ready to retire after that." It was like the it was the end game for me. It was the top of the mountain, and I was like, "For me too." And then I think maybe he was he was just leaving this as a seed in my head. He said. But if there was a comedy you wanted to do, I might consider it. <laughs> and then I got a message in November. Um, and sorry, Christina is going to, my wife is going to listen to this. So sorry that I'm bringing you into this. Uh, I love you, my dear. Um, I got a, uh, we were at the cabin. He, he sent me a message saying, I want to do the Antipodes. I want you to play my lead. Are you, are you in? Uh, I understand if you don't want to. And I didn't even hesitate. Didn't even talk to my wife. I was like, yep. I'm in. <laughs> Done. And, and then I walked out into the room at the cabin. And I said, guess what? <laughs> and she's like, what? I said, I just said yes <clears throat> to another play. And she just went white. She's like, not oh, again. I don't want to do this again, Dars. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. It's got a it, dog. It's, it's funny. A, it's a comedy, though. <laughs> it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Premise. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a writer's room. It's a group of uh, hired writers who are trying to write a, a, a story that kind of encapsulates the end world that we live in. There's something that, that resonates with the audience. <laughs> How do we sell this? I play Sandy. He, he has carte blanche from his uh, higher thans because his last project was a, was a mega hit. Ah. Uh. So he's he's brought in your Orson Welles. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> That's very good. So I I've brought in a couple of my old cronies, and then we've 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 stacked it with a bunch of new talent, and and. I, I don't want well, to give to see too much away, but you know, there's a lot of just really funny moments of me asking them just like to tell their personal life stories because that's where we get our good stuff. Right? Yeah. Yes. Bring bring the insides out here. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like fun. That it, sounds like producers adjacent. Kind yeah, of. yeah. That's right. And 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 nine people in the room, so nine actors, all all with a, a moment. There's n n we don't get to leave the stage, by the way. On the other side of things, there's a storm that's happening outside. Um, Sandy, my character, is like he's losing his summer properties. His wife is dying of something. There's there's all these tragedies happening outside the room. <laughs> so he gets to leave, but everyone else's rules that they have to stay till they figure shit out. Yeah, you're not allowed. We're locking the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you can just imagine what it's going to be like. So, th so the Antipodes by Annie Baker, it goes up, I believe it's May... 27th i might be wrong to june 1st fantastic but but when maybe it's anyway seven shows and uh we'll probably start rehearsing beginning of may but yeah that's i i'm really excited about it i i i know i i know this time i will not have an anxiety attack i can't see i can't see how you can <laughs> i don't know if you can have more than one <laughs> you also got something else coming out you did i mean yeah. I, I like i said we were talking earlier about the work stuff and how i know neil and everybody mm -hmm. and all the amazing crew heads and talent here in winnipeg absolutely um which neil come to tri trivia on thir 13th because this will be out this week so come I'm <laughs> calling you out if you don't come there you go yeah uh but uh you did ordinary angels i did yeah how was that that was, was fantastic experience i, I played such very, a great, great story i'm looking forward to it the, the just looks so it looks so moving uh that scene that they shared with uh and nancy sorrell is brilliant in it oh but, nancy sorrell where they clear the dead and then your big your big man my big Alan Richardson. Alan Richardson. Fuck, I'd um, let him hug me. Breaks breaks down. And uh, anyway, I, I play, 
I, I don't know how much I can give away about this, but I, sure. I, I play a character that, that has a significant um, assist towards the end. Nice. Uh, um, whether or not I, I come through with it is, is up in the air. Okay. But yeah, CEO, I have some money, I have some push. Yeah, big damn deal on that one. Uh, yeah, and I had fun. I had a ton of fun. I was also like forty or fifty pounds heavier than I am now in that film. Was that a suit or did you? No, put it on? I said what I had. This was where I was. <laughs> so you're coming off COVID, okay? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's it's all. This is the therapy session right now. There, that's the streamline through this. It wasn't George Tolls. It was <laughs> my weight, <laughs> the things, COVID. To fully encapsulate yourself in a character it's one step away from method acting almost all the time yeah yeah i mean there there there's a there's something to that um well the way my wife re reacted to me doing another play says that i probably <laughs> uh play a lot in this in this world i do love stanislavski's uh theories i uh i love all of those um the, even all the branches stella adler uh um Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Meisner and one more. Anyway, um, sorry, Glenn Odero, because he keeps reminding me that I tra Strasbourg. He keeps reminding me that I kind of teach in the Strasbourg way. Sure. Yeah. So I I don't encourage it though. I I think the only so why I use it, why I think it's important, is to kind of keep yourself in the zone, to keep yourself present, grounded, and and not allow yourself to be distracted from all of the technical stuff that's going on. Yes. Um, I think that's... But it's, it's a, not carte blanche for being a dick. That's right. Right. No, it's it's a, just a powerful tool you can yeah. use if you are having difficulty mm -hmm. staying in character. Like, if they're, if they're doing four or five takes, and, you know, after take two, you're done because you can't focus anymore, I think method is maybe a great way to kind of keep you grounded and present so that you can do yeah. the amount of takes that they need because they're going to need different frames different sizes but if but if you don't have a sound mind or 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 you're fragile in any way i i don't encourage it i i, I think it's not really good to to stay too long in 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 an idea yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. it's just vacation i, I mean it, it causes things yeah you see the other side, and sometimes when you look into the abyss, the abyss fucking bites back. I've been re I read a couple of things. Maybe it was Star Charlie Theron who talked about it. Um, God, that woman could kick the shit out of me. I and love I'd let her. her happen. But she was on um, um, Smartless. Yes, and and such a good show. I think they were talking about her characters and her method, and she said, you know what? Before she had a, had kids, she was all for it. But as soon as she had children, she realized she was a mother. She's like, I can never do that again. I cannot abandon my kids by, you know, selfishly going into some character to tell a story. Um, so there's there's a lot of things that you need to kind of, if you're going to go into that, you need to do your research. Yeah. Yeah. Do it for a reason and make sure that your world is set up that you're not going to, there, there's not going to be collateral damage. Because it does, it creates it. it you, oh, I mean, you hear like, you hear the man. Right, you hear Daniel Day Lewis like yeah. refusing health care on Lincoln because they didn't have this health care back then. Correct. Okay, man. I get that staying as Lincoln and talking like Lincoln is something that you want to do all day long and you want to be referred to as Mr. Lincoln and I will do that. And that's him just trying to get closer and, and, and hopefully kind of refine something that, that But now your health people. and your bond are in question. Sure. <laughs> now the production, now everybody else's job is in question. Correct. Because you're risking the the story for the sake of a character. You're missing you're missing the target, essentially. So, so understanding the sacrifice and I would argue that Daniel Day Lewis understands yes. the sacrifice yes. he's making yes. for these and this is why he doesn't do film after film he's not he's what, a 10 year break guy yeah right? he's like radio head of movies yeah you know always known will come i bet you they can get him off the couch i bet you if the I bet right you he's, story he's not on the couch i bet you because i think the last time he, he'd stepped away he was gonna move to italy to learn how to become a cobbler yeah maybe he's gonna be a cobbler well you know Maybe this is an extension too of the craziness. That's again, I, it, I, it, but it sounds romantic and interesting to me. It does. It's like I'm going to go learn a skill uh, other than acting that is, you know, thousands of years old and uh, is a is a artistic craft in its own. Yeah. So I don't know. I saw Prince's Shoe House. Okay. <laughs> it turns on music pumps, videos start playing, interviews are happening. There's a piano, and it's just shoes, and it's like. He actually got to the point where he wanted to learn how to make his shoes. 
he would show up with his three shoemakers and be like, tell me what you're doing. How are you doing it? Right. And I'm like, that's a guy who's really married to his craft. Yeah. Sorry, cobbler shoes. No, I love it. Creativity. (laughs) I mean, again, this is this is a long debate. Again, for me, it's about mental health. If if you're challenging your own mental health, if your world is is crashing around you, and again, collateral damage of the people that you are going to need for the journey. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, and maybe I'm talking myself out of something. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, we're not that big. (laughs) I I don't I don't think I get enough opportunities of these big types of roles like all my sons where. Uh, I'm in any danger yet. Yeah. Unless, you know, this life changes. Good, good, yet. I like that you finished with yet. That's an important one. That's another buzz. Yeah. That's another self-help buzz. It's not, no, it's not over yet. Yeah, that's right. I'm entering a foray of direction, directing a, a short film, a MIP. Yeah. Um, it's called Dinner Date. I'm. Uh, we're tell, sh- first of all, tell Manitoba, because that's where our, our fantastic fan base lies. Yeah. What are MIPS? Because I've so, seen three years of MIPS, and I think they're fantastic, and so, it's fun. Yeah, as an actor member, um, I think maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. Anyway, um, because a lot of actors weren't getting the opportunities to grow, to learn, we created this, it's called a member-initiated project. Yeah. And what this allows people to do in the community, as long as they're actor members, uh, excluded from technical. I mean, there's not a lot of actors who know how to do all the technical. Yeah, so the, the base has to be actor-actors and then everybody else But can. you have permission to use actor members, if they're interested, if they agree, to do short films. I don't think longer than seven minutes. I think there's a time limit. There is. They, yeah, some strict rules. Some strict rules. Um, but yeah, you get to utilize actor talent to do short films and that there's no pay. It's usually for food and then a percentage of ownership. Uh, so you can do whatever you want if that thing does get picked up, yeah. turn into a feature or something. Yeah, but then everyone's got to get that percentage that you agreed to at the beginning. Okay. So, yeah, I'm shooting my first. I, I'm, di- I'm a director for hire. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Anita Dare is producing. She's great. Jeff Iami wrote it. Uh, I don't know if you know Jeff. He wrote for Less Than Kind and, and a lot of other things. That's where I fell in love with Nancy. There you go. Yes, Nancy oh. Sorrell. Uh, hi, hi, Nancy. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I'm doing that. What I'm learning so much so quickly is is the amount of legwork that needs to be done because I have a vision for it already. I have ideas, but I've been watching so many short films. I've, just, I've Who's been, influencing you right now? Well, one of the, the leads at the front was Tim Burton. That was from Anita Dare. So we've been I watched a few of those. I kind of settled a lot on Edward Scissorhands. I'm I'm giving Ooh. way too much away because you're gonna see stuff now. It's like huh. Well, I'm gonna see I'm gonna see I'm gonna see a quirky very uh abstract world mm-hmm. set in a contemporary setting. That's all I'm thinking. Right. And so the other side of things, I've been watching just award winning film uh, short films. So I I haven't actually it's R two D two. Yeah. He's saying time's up. No, no. He's agreeing with what you're saying. Okay. Says, good. Keep going. Thank you, sir. Um yeah, so what were we're <laughs> Matt Mip being a director, it's insane. You have no it, time it, to do anything. Yeah, there's just storyboarding, a shot listing. I mean, all these things all the things you were in before that you're now in charge of. Yes, that I'm in charge of to kind of create for the for the creatives who are helping me. Um it's so involved. It's incredibly involved. It's hours of work on the front on the back on the front end before you ever get started yeah. to make sure that everybody in the room has the same vision. That we're not wasting any time as much as possible. Time literally is all you have. Yeah. So I'm doing it. I'm uh, and, and and I'm a producer on it. So it's coming out of my pocket. I'm not getting any. I'm like Guy Madden. I'm gonna have to sell my collage. I'm gonna sell his collage to pay for my film. You make some sort of creative endeavor. I'll buy it and I'll throw it up on the last piece of. I got some. I got some room right there. Okay. Look at that. It'll be an original Darcy right there. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Sold. No, I love those myths. They're really well done. Mm-hmm. Like I encourage anybody who has now heard about this or has heard us to go that have gone to these, go to them. Mm-hmm. Like it's your local talent making really fun, interesting, very moving sometimes yes. shorts. Yeah. You absolutely. can tell a lot in seven minutes. Yeah. No, it's 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 a wonderful event and uh I hope it goes on for a long, long time. Uh it it's it's opened so many doors for so many artists and, and actors to really learn how to f- make film and our talent pool has gotten even that much better because of I believe because of these MIPS existing and giving people opportunity. You get to stretch your talent. And and doing exactly what I'm doing too. I I'm now directing and I get to see I get to now appreciate 
what someone like Jeff Beasley does for a Hallmark movie. When I when I have such an amazing time and he creates this beautiful fun set, I'm like, man, it <laughs> there's so much work on the front end that you do to make sure that happens. Like he's got a crew, he's got people he works with. He knows how Planning, to give everybody an idea booking. of where it's going to go. And then we have a ball. It was the most fun I've ever had on a set. It's crazy. Yeah, and there's I wish you I wish we'd hear more about that. Yeah. More fun on set cuz all of the all, all all of the dirty laundry always gets aired and it's like you know how many movies get made properly and people have fun and 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 there's and, a very inclusive environment like and, and typically that's because people are being asked to do jobs above their pay grade. And then there's a frustration because maybe the result isn't there or there's there, there's no um there's no reception of what's being asked for because there wasn't any preparation enough preparation at the yeah. I think that's typically the set where people just start losing their patience with each other. And then it's in the air. It's and in, then... it, it, it's passive because it goes it goes down the chain at that point, right? Yep. The director's frustrated, so that the AD's frustrated, and then the second and third are frustrated, and then they're treating everybody a certain way. Uh, it, now, the rolls extra, downhill. <laughs> now the extras are, are the, you know, the biggest hassle in the world. And, and all of a sudden, like, the whole... The, but, like, to get back to your point, the egg got dropped. Yeah, the egg got dropped. Yeah. But to my point, I just think these opportunities where... You know, it's still out of pocket, but it's not like we're not. We don't need a hundred thousand dollars to yeah. create it. Uh, it. It just gives us so much more insight and, and understanding, and 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 strengthens our skill sets, so that when when we're asked to play these supporting roles, there's a confidence that that we're walking in with. There's 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 a there's a no. I know how this goes. I know how this works. I know what my job is, by by. By being this, like whatever, I have three lines, but I know why I why I'm here, and I'm gonna give it my all. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, that that to back to your point, like you gotta sometimes know that your three lines are may not feel as important to you because that's a voice in your head, mm -hmm. but to the entire endeavor, mm -hmm. they're very important. They are, yeah, 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 and I think we a lot of us lose opportunities because we say, oh, it's just three lines. Yeah. Three lines that maybe turn into six that maybe well, are the it, best. Well, either that or you get to work with someone you'd never worked with before. I, 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 I remember Carmen Cotta telling the story of Jodie Foster coming in to direct a couple of uh, Tales from the Loop. Oh, uh, I love that. I'm so butthurt that that didn't make it. But she, of course, she brought in a lot of people she already knew for that, for, yeah. the, for the main roles. But there was like maybe five, six one-liners, and, and including me. None of us came out for them because I'm not going out for one line. But then I do have a friend who got a role uh, for one line, and he couldn't stop talking about getting to watch Jodie Foster do her thing. Yeah. Like, what an opportunity. You get paid to sit on a set and say one line and may per perchance be in a Jodie Foster project. But we all passed on it just because we have that, that idea that, oh, if it's not more than six lines, I, I'm not going to work for as an actor. That's not going to further my career. Yeah, that's the that's the free market of it all, right? Like you, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of choice out there, but which ones are the right ones? And like you said, you said yes to everything. I too much. Too much. <laughs> this is one been one of the most craziest weeks of my no oh, of my twenty twenty four. It's not the craziest. I appreciate you yeah. fitting me into it. I I really do. I'm incredibly grateful to you. I really am, Michael. It's so good to meet you. I re just doing my homework and listening to your show. You have a fantastic podcast. You're a little bit of a nerd, <laughs> yeah, but I kind of adore it. <laughs> Before I let you go, okay. I did say that I wanted you and me to talk about something that we're both watching right now. True Detective. Right. And I want to get your take on it for a few minutes before we piece out of here. Okay. The creator, Nick Pazzolotto, Pazzolotto, yep. did the first four seasons, is shitting all over this season. And he's been removed and pulled back to EP on it, I think because he was too overworked. I think he wrote and created that show on He, he didn't have a, a writer's room. Yeah. And after four years of trying to write new content for HBO, I mean, you do get to a point where I think- There's you, a burnout. There's a burnout, of right? Of course. And so they gave it over to this new lady, Isa Davies, I think her name, I-S-S-A-A. I think that's right, yeah. Wrote it, directed it, and created the whole thing, mm -hmm. and is fucking killing it. Yeah, I love it. 
how uh, is this a family watch? Is this just a you watch? Like Christina and I have been getting into it. Um, you know, one of one of the things that drew me in uh, the the Frozen uh, scientists. Yes, yes. It's I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Holy shit!" They borrowed that from my Winnipeg. That's the Frozen horses, dude. Oh shit! Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, amount yeah. of detail in in their in their <laughs> like ah, they're yeah. like all these like. <laughs> they're dying somebody to, needs to, to make a phone call <laughs> no <laughs> just say thank you i love it as a as a as an old uh i i love the characters i i'm really adoring by the way the amount of indigenous stories that are out in the market right now it's getting um, it's it's starting to move it, it's making needle. my heart swell i i just it, it's well little bird got all that traction last year on right. hbo acting good was it's, acting it's good hilarious. is is a fucking he's it's such a sweetheart i know i just uh i mean it, even going as far as scorsese with uh killers, the killers of, the of the flower, flower Moon. yeah yeah the osage and then and then this true detective north country there's there's a very strong proponent i mean i know some of the people are from outside of it but that they, they're bringing that culture into it too this is more of the uh in in, in i don't know in you wit story inuit, inuit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. the 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 nor the true northern uh right snow and this survivors. is this is by no means like a great example of it i'm not saying that but i just it there's there's tones that they're bringing in now. yes they're 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 willing to tell stories inside of that that very dark tragedy that's very hard to un unravel <laughs> oh good lord and gosh i'm just i'm that's just my personal opinion but i'm my heart swells watching these products and 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 reservation dogs on reservation dogs is just incredible right like if you haven't seen it it's shorzy shorzy is doing it yes that's right right like it's and it's like oh yeah okay of course if you're playing in the northern ontario hockey league you're going to have indigenous people on your team of course and the three gyms are fucking priceless yeah. they're the best part of the show <laughs> right yeah jim all right jim no problem jim but no true detective is is i i swear by the first season of true detective is one of the best seasons of television it was the best made. part of the pandemic for you, yeah. yeah for me, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the fact that we still don't know if they're brothers or maybe cousins. Do you think that's why he's upset that she brought? She's trying to bring. Uh, um, that's what he's upset about. Yeah, Cole, he's upset Cole's that family. He's trying. He, they're trying to tie that story together to the to the because because I think I read that when because when that thing came up that 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 was impossible because. Uh, Cole Russ Cole's story was was fabricated in order to kind of get out of something. So Russ Cole's story was fabricated to get him out of the undercover work he was doing in the motorcycle gang. Right. His uncle or grandfather, I can't remember which one it is, was stationed in Alaska. Mm. So it's just a family member that he does mention that was stationed up there, and he did some time in Alaska. I think he did his time in Alaska after they tried to get him out of the motorcycle gang. Right. The connection is just that Rustin Cole's father is involved. He thinks it's the low-hanging fruit, right? Right. Tie back to the first season, the season that everyone loved. With the, with the, the tattoo. The tattoo. The, 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 and the swirl the, tattoo. Exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I love that. Me too. I yeah. think that's fantastic because you're recognizing where we all came from. And there was supposed to be, I heard at one point, there was supposed to be a through line with all these cases. Right. Finally, we're getting that. Yeah, and yeah. Jodie Foster. Is incredible. This right wing. Yeah, racist. Like, shit heel of a human. With, with a daughter who is she? Is indigenous. Is indigenous. And it's stepdaughter, it, but like even. And is trying to kind of connect to her roots. And, right. And, and getting like abused for doing it. It's There's so much going on besides the main story yeah. that keeps you interested. And in, 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 uh, Casey Davis, the 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 one playing opposite Jodie Foster. Oh, yes. The uh, local cop. She's the boxer, right? She's the bo She's yeah, the yeah, MMA yeah. fighter. Yeah, that's right. She's got a really good record, too. Like, she's, like, fuck around and find out kind of fighter. She looks tough, but she's fantastic in She's it. so great in yeah, it. Like, yeah. for, like, I don't think, I think she's got two or three other credits to her name, so being able to work across the thunderous presence of Jodie Foster, mm -hmm. I mean, that's got to be intimidating all on its own. And she's holding her own. The shots, the coloring... The, yeah. Like the ice blues, yeah, and just like the 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 fact that it plays into the Thirty Days of Night. That's one of my favorite oh, vampire yes. yeah, movies. Right. That's right. It there's no uh, more sunlight. No more sunlight. <laughs> Such a great concept. I'm really digging it. Yeah, and I, and I, and I again for me it was just 
wow, they're borrowing. They're borrowing from us. That's cool. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I'm it's I'm probably just making that up, but I believe it. <laughs> it's fucking fact now, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, how many uh, how how many frozen heads out of ten do you give True Detective so far? Yeah, frozen g- horse heads. Fred, frozen horse heads. I uh, I give it a so far. I'm gonna give it seven out of ten. Yeah, yeah, because I because I yeah. I don't get to see it till the end, and you know that's important. Yes, it's got to arrive. You need you you need the third act. Yeah, you need the ending. Totally, yeah. I yeah. get it. But I'm loving it. I'm just uh, engaged with it. Mm-hmm. Everything that's going on in your world right now, I want you to send me all the links for it. So the okay. audition stuff for Guy Madden yeah. and all the information about the play, it'll all be in the show notes. Okay, great. So no matter who trips over this episode, which we know everybody in Manitoba who loves the show will, they're going to know when to come to see the play. I'm going to manifest that we get at least a thousand listeners for this one. I like that. Is that good? That's good. Okay. It's a good number. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You might be the biggest number out of anywhere and no, none of us have ever said that we've never said this episode's gonna do this or this episode's gonna do that so now that you're putting it out into the world That's, it has to happen yeah I'll just I'll put a reverb on that so it just keeps going <laughs> going, going that's a thousand a thousand a thousand there you go uh, is there anything else you want the people to know before I let you go no I'm so good I, you guys got way more than you needed of me and I appreciate it. if you guys listened uh, thank you I love you all I love this city it's uh, I, I, I may leave it at some point but that's That'll be after retirement just so yeah. I can see other things. I, I'm a very fortunate dude, and I'm very grateful. I'm grateful to you. Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Listener, uh, thank you so much for tuning into another episode. Uh, if uh, you haven't got your tickets yet, Friday, no, Tuesday, the 13th, uh, we're live at uh, at Rudy's, um, 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Tickets are on Eventbrite right now, 15 bucks a ticket. Uh, subscribe to the show. That's all we ask you. It's the easiest thing you can do to support us. It's free. It's easy. It's on every one of your podcast players. If you've gotten this far, you owe me. You owe me a subscription if you've listened this far. Say bye to everybody. There's later, everybody. Bye. Watch all the movies, kids. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.